All right. Well, welcome to our webinar. Um, this is the first of a series of webinars that the Wake Green Schools Partnership will be holding. Today, we are celebrating Take a Child Outside Week. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and um, as such, we've got a couple of fabulous guests to talk about Taco, Take a Child Outside. Um, but real quickly, a, a quick introduction about uh, who the Wake County Green Schools Partnership is. Um, we are a group of Wake County Public School System teachers, administrators, partnering and collaborating with community members um, from other organizations. So nonprofits like Wake Up Wake County, um, local governments like Wake County Soil and Water and City of Raleigh Waste um, in Wake County and the university. I'm from NC State. I'm with the Water Resource Research Institute in North Carolina Sea Grant. Yes, at NC State. <laughs> so why don't we just quickly do uh, introductions around the room before our speakers start so we can um, see who is with us today. And I'm going to ask our guest participants. I see we have a few with us live. So if you could, um, Carolyn, unmute maybe and say where, who you're with or who you want to represent today. Absolutely. So uh, I am the stormwater education coordinator working at the Triangle Joint Council of Governments this year. I'm very new to this position, so I'm really just trying to get a sense for all of the different things that are happening around the Triangle and go to as many of these webinars as I possibly can. So it's really nice to be here and meet you all. Thank you for having me. Great. Thanks for joining us. Becky, do you want to unmute? Introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks for putting this webinar on. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm an architect with Clark Nexon, um, was out of the Raleigh office for about 10 years, recently moved back to Virginia Beach, but still heavily involved in a lot of K-12 projects in and around the Triangle. Great. Thanks. And Suzanne. Hi, sorry, I had just got a call from my daughter. Um, I'm Suzanne Robottom and I'm representing Green Hope Elementary in Cary. Uh, we are working on an outdoor learning environment. And so I'm, I'm here to learn um, a little bit, um, get more ways that we can get our students and teachers outside. Great. And hopefully um, later during the discussion part, you can share a little bit more about what y'all are doing over there. Um, I can't remember the name of your outdoor space, but it sounds pretty fabulous. The Falcon's Nest. The Falcon's Nest. Great. Well, thank you so much. Am I missing anyone else who's joining us as participants live? Okay. Well, then we're going to go ahead and move on. And um, I am going to introduce Megan Davis. Megan is the teacher education specialist at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences in downtown Raleigh. Megan leads professional development workshops and field experiences for educators and sometimes students across the state. She is passionate about spending time outdoors and inspiring others to explore their connections to the natural world. So um, Megan, Please take it away. Yeah, thank you so much for having us today. I'm excited to be here. And like Christy said, I'm coming to you guys from the free big science museum in downtown Raleigh. If for some reason you have not visited us, we'd welcome you to do that. Um, and the very first thing that I wanna do is to wish you all a happy Take a Child Outside week. Um, it starts this Friday. And this annual celebration is, was founded originally as a res result and sort of inspired by this book, The Last Child in the Woods by Richard Louvre, and um, is designed this week to help teachers and educators and parents get connect children with nature. Um, and so each year we hope to increase the number of kids and adults also that are experiencing the natural world. And so if you as an educator don't already have plans for this week or next, 
to take your students outdoors, then consider this your invitation. It is now the perfect excuse. Um, so as y'all already know, uh, there are countless benefits to both children and adults spending time in the natural world. A whole host of improved health and well-being on numerous different levels, improved academic performance and outcomes, and it's that a great vehicle to integrate those interdisciplinary connections, as well as covering all of the cross-cutting concepts and the science and engineering practices from the next generation science standards. It also helps to reduce our stress and anxiety. I know during COVID especially, I have loved going outside at any opportunity. And it also encourages us to be better environmental stewards of our earth. Um, so the, the main website for Take a Child Outside has this great map feature where you can use the links to sh sort of shop around for outdoor locations and other partner agencies. Lincoln Heights Elementary School, which Lara is coming from today, um, is actually on here as a partner agency as well. And um, there's also under the activities tab, a big sampling of lots of different activities that you can do from various animal observations to everyday nature or plants, and even more that you can um, take a look at for inspiration for things to do this week. And beyond Take a Child Outside, the museum offers a huge variety of programming and resources for you and your students. And I'm just gonna highlight a few of those today. So on a daily basis, my boss, Melissa and I uh, make up the teacher education team and, and our jobs involve creating, developing and leading professional development workshops for educators that emphasize the hands-on and experiential learning in the natural world. And the first the way that we typically do that is through school grounds workshops. And these school grounds workshops um, come to you at your school and help you figure out what exactly is happening outside and beyond your walls that you can use for free to do with your um, students. And so we have typically three types of school grounds workshops. The first is our most um, intensive and is our program that's called Using the Outdoors to Teach Experiential Science or UTOTES. We often tote lots of gear for these workshops. So it's like tongue in cheek that way as well. And this is an intensive six different workshop sessions for a cohort of between 16 and 24 educators from the same school. It typically costs about $2,000 and that includes all resources that come, like basically we just take that money and spend it on resources that we bring right back to you that support each session and the activities that happen in that season of your school grounds, as well as a habitat installation that enhances the, wild, the benefit to your school grounds um, for the wildlife. Applications are due in April and classes are notified or schools are notified if once they're accepted that spring for the following fall um, school year. Our second type of workshop is uh, sort of like a one-off series. It's like a mini condensed UTOTES, just a single session um, for a group of teachers at your school. And that can happen anytime throughout the year, as long as you register with us at least um, four weeks in advance. So that one is not application-based. And then lastly, our creating your school grounds um, or schoolyard habitats workshop which is at minimum a two session um, pairing that not only installs some form of habitat, a bird observation area or a mini pond or a butterfly garden, and then also the accompanying activities that get you and your students outside and using that space. And that also can happen, happen anytime throughout the year. Next, we also offer educator treks. And these are essentially field trips for teachers like you. And they go all across the state and explore incredible natural areas um, from the mountains to the coast and everything in between. And our third type of big professional development workshop is our Educators of Excellence Institutes. And these are happen usually twice a year to destinations like Yellowstone National Park or Belize, those were both uh, postponed due to COVID last year. And we did 
the institutes here along our Blue Ridge Parkway. So if COVID continues to be an issue, that will be our destination next year as well. But these applications open in the winter and um, are, we make selections in March and April for the following the summer. So like this coming March of 2022 applications will be due and then um, teachers will be notified if they are accepted for that June or July timeframe. And our fourth, thanks to COVID, is now a virtual professional development series called Our Nature Neighborhood. These are all free. They're entirely self-paced and asynchronous. They are available through the Google Classroom platform. And as you work your way through these different activities, like for instance, our insect investigation classroom, you can earn by submitting your activities and your work through the platform, you can earn professional development or credit towards your continuing renewal of your licensure. Or you can also just, and so for example, um, we have 13 different topics ranging from soils and watersheds to insects to squirrel, um, a, a citizen science platform called the Squirrel Project. And this is a sampling of one of the activities after making some observations, you might be called to design your own squirrel comic. And these would be activities you could do with your students as well. Or in our eBird classroom, another one of our citizen science classrooms, um, you might create a sound map. Um, or if you don't want to take the workshops for credit, all of the resources are freely available for you to just steal. And so we'll drop um, the link to this uh, like summary chart that has all of our various topics, a quick synopsis of what's available in that classroom, and then the curriculum, suggested curriculum correlations. There are many, many more um, for that to just to invite you to do that. And then lastly, I wanna invite you this Thursday, so two days from now, is our second annual virtual, and I think it's our eighth annual um, Siren Triangle. Siren is the Scientific Research and, and Education Network, a group of scientists, and we invite you as educators to join us. They are dedicated to promoting and out reaching out into the communities with their real relevant research that's happening right here in North Carolina. And they have designed curriculum correlated lesson plans just for you. You can pick them up for free and talk with those scientists this coming Thursday uh, between 6 and 8 p.m. Um, all you need is to register and you will get a link with a big document of all of the different rooms with the different scientists and topics that you can visit and get those lesson plans and videos. and. Almost all of those scientists are willing to also come to your classroom and do those activities with your students. So it's a great opportunity to really sort of energize with real research what is happening in your classroom and tangible examples. Um, but beyond the teacher professional development side of things, we also offer a whole host of student programs, both on site and virtual. And with regard to our on-site programs, we have two, and we actually have more, but I'm, you guys are Wake County, so I'm going to focus here on um, the downtown Raleigh location. But we have two major locations that offer curriculum correlated programs. And one of those is at Prairie Ridge Eco Station. And that's basically our 40-acre backyard in West Raleigh. And students can explore the pond, the stream, and field habitats. And that also includes our family-friendly nature play space um, for our youngest visitors. Or you can sign up to visit with your students our downtown Raleigh location and sign up for a curiosity class. Um, and there's a whole host of curriculum correlated programs that you can do with your students at, um, during a field trip to the museum as well. Then with regard to our virtual program side of things that's available to y'all, um, we have both curriculum correlated classes that you can take for a flat $50 fee. There's a lot of them for K through high school. Um, and then there's also a series, two series of free monthly programs, one of which is old news, which is like current hot topics and new finds um, related to fossils 
and um, paleontology. And that's the second Tuesday of the month at one o'clock. And then also our natural science classroom, which is the third Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. And you can bring, sign up, register at those links um, and bring your whole class to those different um, opportunities to, to work with our educators and our scientists for that as well. Regardless what you do, we hope that and encourage you and your students to get outside and explore the natural world around you. And just remember that the museum is here as a resource for you um, to help you do that um, over the next coming days, weeks, and months. So with that, I'll open it up to questions and comments. And I know Lara is gonna give some more tangible examples of what the UTOTES program has meant to their school in the next presentation as well. Megan, did you have your book? Um, I didn't have you pinned. If you held it up to show everyone, I was going to invite you to do that again. And my apologies. I have it right yeah. here. It's Last Child in the Woods. This is a wonderful book. It's not, it's definitely not like uh, a new publication or anything. I think the original um, printing was in like maybe 99, early 2000s. Um, but it definitely has been updated and reprinted since then. Um, and it's definitely worth a read. It's very easy to read. Um, so I highly recommend it. Hey, thank you, Megan. Um, we have a question in the chat from Bianca. Great. She asks, what ages would you say the Prairie Ridge Nature Place space is best suited for? Yeah, that is a really wonderful space for like pre-K um, students, but honestly, anyone can find delight there. There's, I, I myself have gotten stuck in the fossil pit several times. You know, you get sucked in. There's a, a, what looks like kind of like a small sandbox, but it's full of fossil dirt. And so I could spend hours looking for shark teeth there and be very happy as an adult. But there's like a digging area with like real shovels and, um, uh, like fairy and gnome play and design area. There's a mud kitchen, depending on the time of year, that mud kitchen, which has like water feature that, you know, lots of tubes and pipes. Um, and so that may or may not be turned on if you go in the winter time, but um, there are like jumping logs and like a kind of tent area for like house play and various, um, wonderful it's basically like the backyard of your dreams or at least that's how i kind of see it so i i love it and it's designed especially there's a giant groundhog tunnel i forgot about that um with a big old corrugated uh like pipe so the kids can crawl through and come up a ladder in the center like a groundhog um i really think it that space is designed for like pre-kindergarten but all families are welcome it's it's not age restricted Good question. I saw another question in the chat in terms of the application process for the UTOTES program. Definitely. So that application opens, um, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the application just asks for an administrator to help fill that out just so that we as the museum know that your administration is supportive of the program. Um, we certainly don't want to accept a school where the principal is like, no, you can't plant a pollinator garden on the school grounds. That's, a, you know, illegal or whatever. So the application ensures that we have administrative support, but walks you and usually it's a co-teacher. So there's usually two teachers that sort of spearhead the effort with administrative support. But there's just a series of just not very many questions that ask you to think about and envision how you would like to use the natural world as an extension of your classrooms and what you sort of envision that looking like, the group of teachers that you would ideally want to have participate in the program. And we are a little bit flexible on that. So Lara uh, worked with us at Lincoln Heights. Typically it's a group of just 12 to 24 educators, um, but 
Lincoln Heights was so enthused that they actually wanted their entire staff to do the program with us. And so we worked it out so that we could make that happen for them. And so we are a little flexible in terms of the amount of teachers that can, can participate from a single school. Um, but it's not a very lengthy application. It basically just ensures us that you've thought about the process and that you're dedicated to um, having a core group of teachers throughout the entire year and that there is you know, support for that at your school. Great, thank you, Megan. Um, you're gonna be here till the very end, right? So yes. if any other questions come up, you're around. Yep. Okay, awesome. Yep. Okay, we're gonna move on to our next guest speaker. Laura Wood is the Environmental Connections Integration Specialist at Lincoln Heights Environmental Connections Magnet Elementary School in Pukwe Marina. She works with teachers and students to get outdoors, write grants and award recognitions, seeks community partnerships and guest speakers and helps plan field trips and campus projects. Laura does it all. And <laughs> Laura, I'm pulling up your slides right now. Awesome, thank you. While you're doing that, um, I'm gonna give Bianca a chance to introduce herself. Um, we all did introductions at the very beginning. So Bianca, if you wanna introduce yourself to the group um, as a resource um, really quickly before I get started into my slides. Thank you, Laura. Uh, will you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Yes, ma'am, I hear you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm Bianca Howard. I oversee outreach efforts for Wake County Solid Waste. And we um, provide uh, school recycling collection to public schools within Wake County and as well as virtual and in-person programming. And we look forward to talking more about our programs on in November. Thank you, Laura. Yes, absolutely. I saw you pop up in the chat. So I want to make sure that you had a chance to introduce yourself before I get started. Um, and if you have questions, just drop those in the chat. And if they're for Megan, um, she can answer those as I go through. And if you have questions for me, just put those in the chat and either um, Megan or Christy can shout those out to me as well. We tried this yesterday and I couldn't talk and share my slides. So they're going to share the slides for me. Um, and I'm just going to talk through them. So that was just the little introduction. Um, I have a very unique position here um, within Wake County Public Schools. There are two environmental connections magnet schools. Um, obviously, I'm at one and then Millbrook Elementary is our sister school in Raleigh. So it's been a great thing for Wake County to take this magnet theme on and to have the two schools that we have with this theme. And it kind of lends itself to my position and then my role um, within the Wake Green Schools Committee as well or partnership. Next slide, please. All right. So I thought this quote was really powerful. If we give kids the opportunity to get outside to learn in nature, to engage with nature in an outdoor space, they're going to learn to preserve nature and fall in love with it. Um, I think that is just so powerful to think about the resources that we have and making sure that we're taking care of them. We're teaching our kids to take care of them so that um, they will be around for future generations. So I'm going to just share some slides um, of things that are going on at my school. I am a little bit different um, than regular WCPSS schools in that we are a magnet school and obviously environmental connections is our theme. So um, I'm probably gonna be a little bit overboard with all the things. So, you know, feel free to ask other questions about resources or how we're able to do different things. Um, on the left, we have our mini pond and that was one of the projects that we installed with UTOTES with the Science Museum. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on when we do um, kind of some teacher trainings that we've done here at the school. But I think it's really important to give kids time to explore and wonder. Um, I did not stage this photo on the left, but I just happened to be at the right place at the right time with my phone. This young man was a new student to our school and he was just totally enthused, enthralled. Like this pond, he just sat and looked and like was so curious. And I was like, take all the time that you need, buddy. And he was like, well, what's this? And why do you have this? And what's in here? And um, it was really great to see him um, have the wonder and have the time to explore and not just be, you know, trying to run outside, do an assignment and go back in or um, just giving them the time to, to look and to ask those questions and to have that connection. Um, on the right, we do have bird boxes. And so it ties in with um, many different things, but this particular one 
was with the first grade EL module um, for language arts, which is all about birds for quarter three and quarter four, which of course works perfectly with bird nests and um, hatchlings and fledglings. And so we um, have 13 bird boxes on our campus and we took the kids around to see all the different ones that have different birds at different times. So that's what we're looking at there. So again, we are trying to integrate our theme um, across grade levels and across the school itself. So sometimes that turns into um, how a particular assignment is structured. And so our fourth grade um, on the left in the display cabinet did a project about the North Carolina symbols, which is of course the social study standards. And they decided that they wanted to use upcycled and recycled materials for the kids to create their projects. So that was really neat um, to see all of the creations that they came up with tying that in. And then on the right hand side, we found these adorable tables uh, that look like trees. Um, and then the little stump, it's the little seat for them to sit on, which fits in perfectly. But then they were using the manipulatives of the tree cookies themselves um, as the activity that they were doing for counting in math that particular day. And Megan, what was your question? I couldn't see all of it real quick about birds nesting. Oh, I was, it wasn't a question. I was just commenting that y'all have great diversity in, in all of your various boxes at your school. Thank you. All right, next please. So this area that you see here is our new pollinator garden. This was our second project. We actually paid extra um, for our UTATES program to be able to do two habitat installations because our campus needed um, some assistance to be more environmentally themed and focused. And so we chose to do the pollinator garden as well as the mini pond. So this was in the spring, just after our plants went in the ground. You can see our beds there with teeny tiny little plants. Um, and it's so wonderful to see because when we go outside now, we have all these big, massive plants. We planted a lot of milkweed. We have our first ever monarch um, caterpillars and we have now the chrysalises and we have some that have emerged and it's really, really, really phenomenal to see. Um, but this group that you see on the left was one of our kindergarten classes and they had left media and they have their own sit spot. So they just came to sit out for some independent reading time and to just have that in our pollinator garden to immerse themselves with that area of our campus. And then on the right um, for second grade in their EL module in the spring, they do pollinators for um, quarter three and quarter four. And so they had some butterflies that they had emerged. You can see she's got her little container and they happened to be bringing them out while there was another grade level out there. So it was really neat to see the big kids like teaching the little kids. I think it was a kindergarten class to know like, look, we have all these butterflies and now we planted this pollinator garden for them. Um, and it was really a fantastic, you know, just coincidence that we were all there at the same time. Um, and we, me with my phone to get a picture of it. <laughs> Next, please. So again, we do have the environmental theme. So we're gonna be a little bit more specific and targeted with some of the things. Um, these are teachers that specifically teach about um, the environment, it's called environmental inquiry and it's a special class that is specific to our magnet theme. But the things that they're teaching tie into the grade level standards. They're not doing anything wild and crazy or different. Um, but on the left, they were looking at seeds. So that ties into several grade level standards. Um, seed pods, you can talk about plants, you can talk about roots. And then the group on the right um, was actually doing something else, but they noticed the bugs on the tree. And so the lesson very quickly shifted to, well, what are these bugs? Are they helpful? You know, are they harmful? What are they? And they took them inside and looked at them under the microscope uh, that's hooked up to the computer. And it was really fantastic to see the engagement that the kids had. They were all very excited. These were new trees that we had planted and they wanted to make sure that they weren't going to be harmed by these bugs that we discovered on our tree. So we do have gardens um, on our campus. We have, I believe there are six garden beds in this particular area. Um, the picture in the top left is very recent. Um, that was within the last week or two. Um, the kids are actually out there writing. Um, so they're not actually working in the garden. They were writing about their observations or you know, what was growing. We talked about the math standards that tie in there with arrays. You can see the string um, that goes across the bed there. And so actually our art teacher is really phenomenal about maintaining these beds um, and planting things. So he sent a whole like, here's your math connection to arrays and those sorts of things. And then the bottom right, um, that group is actually weeding. So they had time to come out. They all have, we have kid gloves, you know, so they have trowels 
and they're out there working on weeding those beds and getting them in um, a state that they could have new plants planted in them. And I will be honest, across our campus, we are still battling the weeds from being home for, you know, that amount of time last year from March until October, we still haven't caught up to the weed problem, but we're working on it, so. So a few other things um, on the left, that group of four pictures was the day that we did our mini pond installation. So we actually had that group of kids uh, in two stations. Well, three stations, technically. One group was doing the mini pond installation. Um, and then this group of students was looking at um, water that had come from Prairie Ridge. And so the kids were looking for macroinvertebrates. They were trying to discover what were all the different things that were in the pond water. So they were doing that while another group was actually putting in the mini pond. And then um, we had another group that was working on the pollinator garden bed installation. On the right is just some unique seating options um, that might be available. The top one is kind of like the shape of an S. It's got a um, top piece where you can see that EL module book sitting. And then there is a section on the bottom that you can sit on. So it makes this little platform that if your Chromebook worked this far away from the building, you could set it up there, but it doesn't. That's why they don't have their Chromebook up there. Um, that's why they have just their book, but it would work if they were closer to the building. Um, but she liked those. She, um, the teacher that uses those got a grant, um, or used donors shoes and was able to purchase those, um, for kind of like that alternative outdoor seating. And then the bottom, you can see, we just have tree stumps. So that is another option. Um, we had some families, you know, we put out a a request like who has some stumps that would be great seating and so we have those just by uh kind of near where the the tree is in the top picture so um those are other options that we have for outdoor seating as well all righty so one of the ways that we try to help teachers is to show them that being outside doesn't mean you have to be teaching science we want to be showing them all the different ways that they can be outdoors to teach all the different subjects. So this slide is actually all about math. Um, the picture in the top right was a third grade class and they were doing area and perimeter. They were looking at the bricks on the bottom versus the bricks on the top versus the windows versus the door frame versus uh, the concrete you know, portion of the sidewalk there. So they were looking at all of the different shapes and sizes. Um, I've seen groups out in the courtyard also do measurement out there for fourth grade for math. We have different shapes. So you could do kinder and first, they're talking about types of shapes. We have hexagons, you know, we have squares, we have rectangles. We have the tree, you can see a tree trunk there. Um, so you've got circles, different things like that. The bottom right was first grade. They were doing equations. And so they used those natural materials from outside and they actually just used clearly, you know, brown leaves and green leaves, but that wasn't what they had to use. They could choose different materials. Some used rocks, some used sticks, some used pine cones, some used acorns, pecans, like all the different things. That was really, really neat. The bottom left, um, they were doing their math and it was something on a piece of paper, but they just went outside and did it. So it doesn't even have to be, you know, completely using what you have in your outdoor space. Just taking your kids outside to do your normally scheduled activity or lesson is also a great way to get outdoors. And the top left um, is an example about how to change the wording of what you're teaching to make it more focused on the environment or on nature. So this was again, a, a first grade math problem. And um, they were learning all about the Lost Ladybug project. And so the teacher just said, well, let's make our math problem about ladybugs. And so they did. So that was another great way just to show all the ways uh, to teach math focused on being outdoors. So EL, uh, which is the language arts curriculum is very scripted um, if you're using that. Um, at your school, which I assume most uh, elementaries are in Wake County now. And one easy way, like we said, is to just take your normal lesson and to move it outside, which is about, you know, the majority of what you can do with the EL curriculum. So the bottom left, that class just took their text and they're sitting outdoor, outdoors under our outdoor classroom. And then in the top right picture, um, you can see the outdoor classroom in the background. But in the foreground, um, that was during the time we were putting in our mini pond, as you can see, and we had a red wheelbarrow out there that was full of the soil we were digging up. And in the fourth grade EL module, they're reading Love That Dog. And it talks about the red wheelbarrow. There was a poem about it. And so they thought that was the perfect place to read and learn about that poem. So they brought in their yoga mats or their beach towels to be able to have seating um, in that outdoor courtyard space all about the red wheelbarrow. 
And this was last spring. I mean, I, well, I use that term loosely. Uh, it was after Christmas. It was in the new year, but it was obviously very cold. We had um, fifth grade when we were doing the rotations um, with our upper grades. This group had some extra time and the teacher said, well, what can we do outside? And I said, you know what I need? I need some weeding done. And so these kids were, I kid you not, all too happy to do some weeding. And every kid that's like showing their weeds, they were so proud of the weed that they collected, either because of the size of the weed, the root system that they got, the whole root or, you know, the chap root or just the sheer, like I had this one kid who had like a pile, you know, they're like, look at all of my weeds. So again, we have the trowels, um, we have the materials. And so they just spent like 15 minutes weeding and they were very excited to be able to have ownership of that particular space that they held they had helped work on and this slide also speaks to the fact of proper um attire to wear outside as well as proper footwear and that is something that we are constantly reminding our families about we are you know expecting to take your children outside so please make sure that they're wearing the appropriate clothing to be outside whether it's coats in winter or you know not wearing a sweatsuit in August, um, the proper footwear, not wearing flip flops, those sorts of things. So I wanted to mention that as well. So teacher training, I did want to talk a little bit about that because as we are a whole school magnet, it's a little bit different. And so I did want to make that clear. Um, it might be tricky to try to do something like that, but you might have, you know, some staff buy in, um, like Megan was talking about for the UTOTE. So we actually, as she mentioned, did the UTOTES training with our entire staff. And in the picture in the bottom right, that's Megan in, I believe that green shirt right there with the bug net in her hand. She was demonstrating um, about, we were doing um, like a bug sweep in the weeds there, which was a garden bed, you know, at one point uh, before we all went home. So teacher training there. And then on the left, um, ours actually ended up spanning two school years because of COVID when we shut down. Um, so it was like part of this year and part of this year, which of course is not the norm. But on the left, you can see on the uh, the top, we were looking, I believe, at like the flower petals. And the bottom left, we were doing um, a weed walk. So Project Learning Tree is another whole staff workshop that I have done for my teachers, or I had, you know, someone come in to do. And I wanted to talk a little bit about um, EE or Environmental Education Workshops and Certification. That's something that's a great um, opportunity that I have on another slide. And then NCAT, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about on another slide as well. But I want to mention those as other teacher training options. So this is a handout that we have on our website and you can see the link there. This is a link and we'll put the slides in the chat. Um, so when you click on that, it does go to our Wake Green Schools Partnership Google site. And this is an infographic that we created about teaching students outside why to go outside, um, how to get outside safely. And I'll talk about some of those like to-go bags and before heading out, ready to go. Um, and then there is information there about a deeper dive from Jennifer Fine, who is the elementary senior science administrator. And again, the website is there at the bottom for our Google site. So we'll um, give you again, these slides that you have access to. So as I mentioned, um, it can be a little bit challenging if you're not accustomed to taking your kids outside. So I thought it would be helpful um, even for like new teachers here at my school, kind of to very specifically and intentionally lay out what are the things to think about and to keep in mind. So going outside like a pro, first of all, please always tell your office, your front office staff, um, when you're going outside, when you're back inside, um, because they need to know where you are if they need to get access to your kids. Um, take your walkie talkie and your red bag so that you are prepared for any little minor scrapes and scratches. Um, I would always suggest go over the assignment and expectations before you go outside so that you have their full attention about what the expectations are for the work that they're going to be doing. And you can reiterate, we are going to do this assignment. This is not recess. Um, some kids equate outside with recess. And so it can take a little bit of time to share with them. We are going outside, but we're going for a learning experience. We're not going out for recess. Um, and so sometimes it needs to be very clear about the boundaries in which they need to stay in. You know, okay, you're going to be in this courtyard or you're going to be from here to the fence or you're going to be between here, you know, and give them a very specific location. And then a signal of when they need to come back together or listen for directions. I know some of our teachers have a whistle. Some say a saying, some make like a bird call whatever that is for your students, make sure that it's clear to them 
that they know when um, to be able to come back together. And then practice it just like we do anything. Practice it until it becomes routine. Just take five minutes, do it, go out, and then turn on and come right back in. You know, it doesn't have to be the first time that you go to do something is the first time that you practice it. Um, also, I would please caution you to check out the area and the assignment beforehand. If you need the Wi-Fi, make sure that the Wi-Fi works at the point that you want to go. We know for sure, like I said in that one, it doesn't go all the way to the tree. So we can't take the computers out there. Um, what area is going to work best for your lesson? Do you need a flat space for the kids to write? So if you have picnic tables or are they going to be drawing? Can they, um, do they have clipboards? You know, do you have a rolling cart that would be something easy to make, you know, the transition from the inside to outside? Give the kids a little bit of time to explore and to wonder. For a lot of our kids, they don't have a safe place at home. They don't have an adult that can monitor them. And so the time that you give them may be the only time that they have access to a place outside that gives them this connection to have the time to explore and to wonder about nature. So I always make sure to point that out because that's something I think we overlook and it's very, very important for access um, for all kids to the outdoors. And when a hiccup occurs, because it will, something will go wrong, there'll be a snafu, you forgot this, don't give up, try again. Uh, and think about how it can be done differently to maybe go better the next time. And I already talked a little bit about the clothing and the shoes expectations. And then of course, water bottles, uh, if it's a hot day or you have kids who you know, need to have water available for them while they're outside. So Taco Week, Megan talked a little bit about Taco Week. We um, mentioned it does start this particular Friday. The dates are always the same, um, the 24th through the 30th. So I want you to think about ways that you can engage students in nature. How can you make a plan to have your students go outside for a learning opportunity during that time frame? I did link the website here, which Megan has as well. And then I'm gonna just quickly go through some ideas on the next slide uh, or the next few slides um, about things you can do outside for Taco Week. But before I get to that, I'm super excited. This is the cutest thing I've ever made and I wanted to share it with you guys because I'm so proud of myself. Again, we're whole school, so I can make a bulletin board in the hallway about Taco Week. So I made these cute little plates. And then um, on the work day we had last week, I um, had one hour with all of the staff. And so every staff member got their own taco and wrote about one way that they were going to take their students outside during Taco Week. So we put it on the board um, so that the students can see it when they go by. It holds the teachers accountable. And then I found these super fun shirts on Amazon, let's taco about science. I just wanted to show them because it's super cute. But yes, I'm tacos for dinner maybe, right? <laughs> All right, so real quick, the next few slides, just a few quick ways, um, some thoughts or ideas. You can do bird watching, you can do poem writing, and like I'm gonna go super fast, so just click, click, click. Um, bug catchers, we actually did this activity with the museum. You can just use potatoes, you carve out a little you know, area and then put them outside. And then once you leave them for a day or two or three, the bugs will begin to find them. And then you can have that learning opportunity with the students about what's there and why. So um, morning work, if you have extra time or something that you can tie into a writing activity, um, you can collect rocks from outside. You can cheat and buy rocks, uh, Lowe's, you know, Home Depot or online. You can paint them as a craft or, um, in art class, and then you can write a story about what you, you know, painted on your rock. So again, um, you can use outdoor materials there on the left, you can do rubbings, you can make artwork pieces. Um, on the right, they use some natural materials, and then they wrote a story um, about their picture that they drew, what materials, um, one of our fifth grade teachers was doing body systems, and they use natural materials from outside to create um, like their digestive system. And they put them on like poster paper. It was really funny to see like intestines made out of like leaves and sticks, <laughs> but it works. You can do um, a backyard bug hotel. That's probably a better idea for a, here's something you can do at home activity. WCPSS, not a fan of a backyard bug hotel on our property. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Litter clean up, um, we always have teachers who have snack outside. So I'm always finding wrappers or pieces of, you know, somebody's Ziploc bag. So a litter clean up is an idea. I mentioned the weeding, uh, watering the plants. 
Thank goodness for the rain today because I was like, is it ever going to rain again? Um, so we do have plants, you know, that are new that need the watering um, to keep them healthy and established and alive. You can look for tracks um, or you can create your own footprints. Um, you know, if you have a medium like Play-Doh or, um, you know, sand or something like that. So there are different ways that you can talk about footprints or what different species look like if you were to see them. You can do, um, Megan mentioned that like a sound walk, you could do that. Um, second grade science standards is sound. You can do a nature walk on your campus. Just talk about, you know, what are the different things that you see? Um, just kind of letting the kids experience and be aware of things that they may not be aware of around your school campus. Nature bracelet. Um, we like to joke that even our big kids, our fifth graders like to do this. You take like masking tape and you do it inside out around your wrist. And then they can collect and put little things, you know, onto their bracelet and then wear it for the remainder of the day or take it home. Um, just reminding them, you know, not to pick the poison ivy. Um, there's always fun bingo or scavenger hunts that you can find online. Um, you can just Google that and find one that fits well for your campus, whether you want to do something with pictures for little kids or words for big kids, um, or you can make one that's specific to your school campus. That is something that we are going to be doing in the future when I have time, but that's on our to-do list. So something else neat. You can investigate uh, what's in your recycling. Does it belong there or not? I was in a second grade room today and I was pulling stuff out of the recycling bin. This is not recyclable. You cannot put this in there. Bianca, I thought of you <laughs> like, this is not, you know, it was like a Ziploc bag with candy wrappers. I was like, this is not recyclable. You cannot put this in our blue bin. Um, so that's always one thing you can do or the converse of that, what's in your trash that should be in the recycling. That's always another way to look at that. So something else, um, thinking about that and the child who gets distracted by observing a feather on the ground and hearing the wind rustle leaves will grow to understand so much more. So yes, we're teaching. Yes, they're learning, but it's not always just about did we teach the standard and how did they do on this test? Um, we need to share with them all of the wonders and all of the great things to be found outside and the appreciation of the natural world as well. So online resources, I'm not gonna go over all of them. You can see Project Learning Tree, Project Wet. Project OWL um, is something I just recently attended. It stands for Outdoor Wonders and Learning. There are grade level um, topics with ready-made lessons that are there. The EE website is all about environmental educator certification um, or just opportunities for you to get out and explore, even if you're not interested in doing your certification. There are always workshops and things um, that you can attend. The aquarium is there. The Museum of Natural Sciences is there. Um, the NCAT that I mentioned, it is through the Science Museum um, and the North Carolina Center for the Advancement of Teaching. The one that's coming up, I believe it's in November, is called Sand, Sea, and Citizen Science. Super cool. I want to go, but I'm going to try to refrain myself so someone else can go. Um, Environmental Educators of North Carolina and then NAAA, which is the North American Association for Environmental Education. Just other resources um, that are there. I think I'm almost finished. Questions um, that you have about anything that I went over because I saw some things popping up in the chat. Um, and then ideas that you have for your students. If you're like, oh, I think about, you know, I might try this or this or this. And then on the very last slide, I have my Twitter there as well as my email address. So um, you're welcome to contact me in either of those ways. And then please shout any questions that came up um, or other thoughts that we want to address. Cause I know we do have some time built in for questions here at the end. Thank you, Laura. That was fun. And I liked in the in the chat, Megan said, potatoes make excellent isopod or roly poly igloos. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try that one. <laughs> this is so, and um, yeah, go I was ahead, just Suzanne. wondering if you could um, mention again where we can find out the slides and all of this information because there was so much great information on both of the presentations. Uh, 
That's a great idea. Are we just going to make these like um, findable where they are? Do we want to post them on our website? We do have a website. Actually, I should post the website anyway, right? This has um, been great. I have so many ideas now and, and more direction to share with Green Hope. So I'm excited. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, you are on our listserv, correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. I think once we decide where these are going to land, we will send that location out. Okay, so Laura's already sent hers out in the chat and Megan too. Okay, thank you guys. So you can find their presentations there, just copy those and save those links. And make sure you can access it before um, we get off because I do want to make sure I try to make sure I had it correct, but I inevitably sometimes don't have the access correct. So please check and make sure um, that you can access it as. Right, as and if you are joining us later, watching the recording, we will make sure that these presentations are linked somehow to our Google Sites website um, for the Wake Green Schools Partnership. So. I'm curious, you know, we have just a five minutes here, but those of you who are joining us live um, today, I'm curious to hear about some of the things that you might be doing or that your, your child's school might be doing or maybe something you wanna do. I was reading all the comments in the chat. I was like, okay, what did I miss during all my talking with <laughs> scrolling through? Yeah. Things. I mean, Suzanne, do you want to uh, share what you, your school has done so far with the Falcon's Nest? Sure. Um, I mean, we um, over the summer were able to um, grade the land, um, add um, the, all the concrete and walking paths and then put in a pavilion as well. Um, we have, uh, now that we, and we've passed our permit, all the permits, so the space can technically be used even though we don't have all of the habitats and learning stations and everything, we're moving to that next phase. So at the moment, I think we're working on getting some different um, seating options uh, out there so that at least there's more of an opportunity to be able to use the space. Um, and then we, have purchased a weather station as well as um, some of the um, pieces for some of the math um, stations as well. Um, and we're working on, you know, trying to figure out where we're going to put the different habitats as well. So coming up with ideas, even though we don't have all of the, the plants and shrubs and trees um, right now is kind of, I think, where we're at to try to encourage more of the teachers, even though not everything is outfitted, there's still a lot to be gained by taking the students outside. So kind of trying to do that um, level of encouragement um, and ideas. That's why I was so interested in some of the workshops, because I think that would be an excellent way um, to put you in touch with the teachers, um, which would be um, helpful to, to the school as a whole. And that's Green Hope Elementary School, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, there's some great stuff. And you mentioned a weather station. I don't think I heard Megan and uh, Laura talk about weather, exploring the weather. So we could add that to our list of um, definitely you can take students out by for. Yes, we have um we have a rain gauge through the Coco Ross C O C O R A H S. Don't ask me what it stands for. Um, <laughs> the collaborative something something something. Um, <laughs> but we have a rain gauge and then we also have just a regular weather station, um, that we have at another location. Great. I don't, I'm not sure. I know we talked about a rain gauge. I'm not sure if Thank we you. have the Coco Ross one or not. <laughs> I'll drop it. It's a specific type of rain gauge. Um, it's one of the citizen science platforms or projects that is specifically about weather and precipitation. And it stands for, it's an awful acronym, Community <laughs> Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. Um, I'll drop it into the chat, but the rain gauge is a pretty substantial, it's not like one of the narrow ones. It's like okay. about a four and five inch opening. And it's maybe, you could collect about a foot of rain if you really needed oh, to. 
Um, and I think they're maybe like $50 or something. You can order them through the website I dropped in the chat. And that's oh, one of the citizen perfect. science projects that we'll be doing an activity activities with um, at our NCAT workshop in November, if that's something you're interested in. Great, thank you. These are great resources. All right, so we just have one minute left. Is there anyone else who wants to share an idea or a question? And feel free to reach out to us if you think of something on the way home or tomorrow or in the shower, like, oh, I had this great idea, you know. We are here as a resource for you. All of us are here because we want to help you um, be able to have these access points for your students to be able to get outside. So email us, um, you know, whatever's the easiest way to, to get a hold of us to, to ask. Um, or on the Google site, there is a group if you're not a member of that. Uh, and you can also post things on there. So we do have like 200 members, I think, in our group, actually more than that. So you can always pose a question like, my school wants to do this, what were challenges that you ran across I should know about? Or what was the best way you found to do blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's another resource, you know, beyond just a few of us, you have this other whole scope of folks that are teachers, administrators, community partners um, within the Wake County area that, you know, might we have like master gardeners and we have, um, you know, forestry folks and we have soil and water. So we have just this large um, avenue of resources that are available to you as well. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up, that up Laura. I, I don't think I mentioned that. We're trying to create a, a network of, of teachers and support um, for doing these things at the schools. So anyone in Wake County can access this network and get the support they need to get their kids outside or create an outdoor learning area or just do a simple activity. So I um, wanna thank our guests, Megan Davis and Laura Wood um, for sharing for our Take a Child Outside Week webinar. And thank you everybody for joining us. It was great thank you so here. much. Get outside. Have a great week. Woo! Yes, Woo! Happy Taco Week. <laughs>